Hi, this is Presh Talaker. Let's discuss the prisoner's dilemma. You and your partner in crime have been apprehended by the police. The officer explains they don't have much evidence, and if you both hold out, then you will each serve one year in jail. The officer wants you both to confess, in which case you'll serve two years in jail each. He also explains that if only one of you confesses, that person goes free, and the other will serve four years in jail as a penalty for holding out. He separates you and your partner, and you think about it. If you could trust your partner and you both held out, then you'd only serve one year in jail. However, if your partner confesses and you don't, then you will serve four years as a penalty for holding out. That doesn't sound very good, so you think about it logically. If your partner confesses, then you'll serve four years in jail for holding out, but only two years for confessing. On the other hand, if your partner holds out as well, then you'll serve one year in jail for holding out, and you'll go free if you confess. Clearly confessing is less jail time for you no matter what your partner does. Your partner goes through a similar calculus and realizes confessing is better for him no matter what you do. So in the end, you both confess to the crime and serve two years in jail. And that's the strange part, because if you had both held out, you would have only served one year in jail each. The prisoner's dilemma is a conflict between doing what's best for yourself as an individual and considering the group and what might be best for the group. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can support me on Patreon. Catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, on Twitter at Presh Talwalker, and you can get my book on game theory called The Joy of Game Theory, which discusses the prisoner's dilemma.